Hi, my name is Gabby. So I'm a dealer mm. in Badri Capital. So I've been there for like about eight years. Mm. Hey guys, I'm Rina. Hi, I'm Rina. Rina. Hi, hi. I am a senior financial planner, also the branch manager at by, by, wow. Baidori Super Safe. For um, I've been with Baidori for almost twenty years now. So how about you? Uh, hey. Yeah, I'm a GE. I'm a certified financial planner. I uh, specialize in planning for retirement and uh, couples with kids. Mm. Mm. Nice. I'm in the industry for about five years now. After serving the government for four and a half years in a police wow. force. Uh, my name is Mina. People call me Sa Mina Mina. Hey, hey, hey. <laughs> right. I'm sorry, I just have to do it. <laughs> I'm uh, also a certified financial planner. Manner. Manner. <laughs> I'm also a certified financial planner. And I also like to do uh, content creation a lot on financial planning. Mm. So I'm supposed to ask you guys about your hobbies. Who wants to start first? We do one thing. We do one thing. One, two, one, two three. three. I, it's, that's not even a word, right? Okay, so uh, in terms of hobby, I am a nerdy person. I like uh, sci-fi, I like Star Wars. I like little miniature models that you can build and paint up and play on the tabletop. Yeah, mm-hmm. and uh, video games, uh, those kind How of things. How long have you been doing that? Long, ever since I was like Born. 10 years old. Uh, what about you? You seem like you have a lot of hobbies to share. Do I look like one? <laughs> Well, um, seriously, um, I I do not have any hobby. It's really <gasps> hard to pursue a hobby after having kids. That's true, right? Um, I used to do like sports, like just yoga actually, and hiking sometimes, but not so much. Mm. But yeah, mm-hmm. how about you, Mina? Mm. Hobbies can relate. No can <laughs> kids. <laughs> kids. <laughs> I have no kids. I I like running. I like reading. Mm-hmm. And I'm what people call otaku. Wow. Right. Oh. Otaku uh, is someone who likes to watch anime. <laughs> I'm pretty sure this site is like Korea. <laughs> <laughs> Not really. I understand. No, I understand. Yeah. Okay, 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 okay. She understands. She's judging. <laughs> I'm not judging. I'm not judging. I mean, I do watch it's anime. It's okay. You don't have to defend yourself. <laughs> it's okay. You can judge. I don't have much hobbies like Rina. I have two kids. So that is quite handful. Hmm. And so on my sp- if I do have spare time, then I do a lot of reading. Okay, so we're back here and we're going to do like the NGL questions that we've asked um, the public, okay, on your channel, your channel, and our channel. Okay, so let's start with the first one. I am financially stable. I have enough emergency fund and cash flow, including sinking and travel fund. But I want to know how can I increase my wealth so I can live better? So basically, you're stable already and then you have everything sorted, I assume. So one thing is to redefine what you want, like how much you want, right? Because this guy is stable already. That means he's close to financial freedom level of things, right? So he's trying to get to the financial abundance level because he wants to grow the wealth. So the only way to do that is to invest more. In uh, if he's young, more aggressively. If he's older, less aggressively. But then, it all comes down to redefining what he wants. If he's a lady, inv- invest in more handbags, ah. <laughs> assets, or find a rich husband. <laughs> I, uh, I agree with that. Uh, number one, I really like what G rich mentioned. Oh yeah, marry a rich husband. <laughs> 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 what he mentioned just now, number one, was redefine your own wealth. I think that's super important because sometimes we just think, oh, I want a luxury car or whatever. But if mm. luxury car is your type of wealth, that's you, right? That's yeah. your thing. Correct. Yeah. Right? Mm. For me, who's like, I don't even know what, you know, what's the difference between... Proton and Vios. Yes. To that level. Yeah. To that <laughs> level. <laughs> right? So that is not my wealth. But uh, if I may share, yesterday I was reading this book called the Almanac of Neville Ravakind, right? So he is an, he is a business owner at Silicon Valley. So he founded mm-hmm. a couple of uh, business and then he is also an angel, angel investor. He literally invested in hundreds of Silicon Valley companies. Right? So he mentioned about two points. Number one, if you really want true wealth, right? You cannot keep on trading your time right mm-hmm. and then there uh, and that's where investment comes in right uh, and then how do you invest he says uh, there's three broad 
leveraging cate- category. Number one is either that you leverage people. What do I mean by that? You start a business. There's no way I can manage the whole business restaurant on my own, mm-hmm. right? I cannot sure. yep. cook. I yes. cannot cater. So mm-hmm. you leverage mm-hmm. on people. You pay people and then that brings everyone more money. Number two is to leverage on capital or money, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, leverage on money is like, it's like, oh, I'm good. I go to the stock market. I invest in other people's business, right? Mm-hmm. I'm just putting in my money. My money works for me already. Yeah. Right. Correct. Ding ding. Where do we get that? Okay. Number three. <laughs> <laughs> Number three is the new type of wealth right now is what people call investing in products that do not have uh, replication costs. So these are the people that you see. Oh, Mr. Beast. They just make one YouTube videos, but the videos is recurring over and over again. So mm. that's the new kind of wealth, lah. Yeah. Another example, of probably like right now, uh, people are looking to AI, right? Mm. Chat GPT. Um, yeah. They mm. code one thing. And then it keeps on growing over and over again. Yes. Mm-hmm. Uh, so yeah, that's from my book. Lah. And how do I start on investment? Taking into consideration that I also have limited funds to invest. Okay, so if let's say you have very limited funds, at least you need to start off, um, I guess, 1,000. Because uh, most of the investment products minimum is 1,000. Mm-hmm. Yes. Can you do monthly? Yeah. Um... We do have a regular, we do have a regular saving, saving fund, but mm. provided mm. you buy into that original uh, unit trust first, then you can start with a regular, a regular savings fund and minimum is just 100. Yes. So you have to start up with 1,000 and then 100. Yes, yes the correct. Okay, mm. that's cool. Is there any charges on that? Yes, we have a sales right. charge, but uh, one time off. I have been browsing by Jury Capital, Trade and Invest. I don't know what to choose because I'm financially illiterate. I just want a better return and minimal risk. Should I just put my money in fixed deposit? At least principal is protected. So if you're looking for the most minimal risk, then yes, fixed deposit Mm. is it. But of course, if you want better gains, then of course you have to take some risk. Mm. If you're looking for a product with zero risk, high returns, I'm also looking for it. <laughs> <laughs> let us let know. Let yeah. us know. Ding, ding. <laughs> I think the best way is also to engage you guys to do a risk profile. Because uh, some yes. people, they feel like yes. their risk appetite is very low, but actually they're quite balanced or mm. even yeah. on the higher end, but yes. they want to diversify. Yeah. Or some people, that's really aggressive, but after you're doing the risk profile, they're actually quite conservative. One. Mm-hmm. True, true. So that is one way to actually get started as well. Yeah. Actually, Rina, what are the tools that are provided by Bajuri Bank when you go in for a financial planning session? Aside from, yes, risk profile, like it? Um, we do have the client suitability profile as well. That's where they will have to mention their existing um, assets or if they have an existing invest- investments outside Brunei. Mm. So at least we would, we would know that um, their risk profile and the sometimes the important thing to see also how long have they invested in the previous in the previous um, investments that they have mm-hmm. because their risk may change over the months or yeah. even over the years. Mm. So um, it's the actually the risk profile and the client suitability profile um, is for us to to analyze from for, from the customer. To those in university, okay. How do you manage to save while living your life to the fullest? Do you work part-time? How do you balance work and school? Okay, la, let's, let's just assume I just graduated. Oh. Right? But, <laughs> okay, freshman, honestly, but honestly that, that's a, two questions, right? Okay. Honestly, when I was a student, I had no idea. I did not save as much, right? Mm. I wish I had the awareness at that time. But the only reason I was saving was so that I can travel more. Mm. <laughs> right? Good. Um, but... I was actually more broke, I would say, when I started my early career, like right, when I started working, honestly. Because you're broke Broke <laughs> Yeah, broke like because I'm not working, but I'm actually broke <laughs> Um, But I realized, firstly, um, life, living life to the fullest don't have to be expensive, right? Mm-hmm. I would... Mm-hmm. Don't I would not have money, but I would still go around and you know go to the you know mom mark rather than cafe, and I would still enjoy the company of my friends stuff mm-hmm. like that. Yep. Um, number two, oh I, I was the kind of person who really took opportunity from 
uh, for students out there, right? So I tried to volunteer so much. I tried oh, to do ooh. a lot of project, and nice. I was sent for like youth ambassador thingy, wow. right? So I was like, yeah, I get to travel for free. So that kind yes. of opportunity, I really seize it. But then that is my definition of living life to the fullest. Like if mm. you're the type of person like, oh, I don't want to travel. I just want to sit down. Then that's mm-hmm. your living yeah. life to the yeah. fullest. Mm. Yes. Correct. Mm. Yeah. And yeah, that's pretty much it. Oh yeah, but right now, you know, the students nowadays, um, they would literally come and then they say, oh, Mina, I want to start investing so that I can compound my money mm-hmm. as soon as possible, kan? It's like, yeah. oh, amazing. And they still go to travel. I don't know why exactly, tapi, yeah, somehow they manage. <laughs> right? students, ah. are, students are smart. Mm. Right? They're, yes, they yes. always make a way. These new generations are actually, yeah. maybe they, they actually know. Because I think because of the the internet, the mm. social media that can right. help us Google everything yeah. or to get all those kind of informations. Yeah. Right. Like mm-hmm. all the side gigs, all mm. the business. Where we don't really have all that when you were back yeah. then. <laughs> like two years back, right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Last year. <laughs> we have to work. Yes. yes. We just yeah. want to, want to um, study and work. Mm. Yeah. I think most of... I think all of us came from the generation where they say, go to school, get a good job, yes. get yes. stable income, mm-hmm. right? And yeah. then yeah. Uh, yes. it's how we break that mold mm, slowly. Yeah. And now yeah. the yeah. new generation is very different. Yes. It's true. Yes. And it was yeah. so funny, like my time, my parents died and don't let me do part-time. Oh, Because okay. mm. there was like a... Sh- um, Oh. And I was like, Ma, it's just literally sebala. Can I try? You know, so I get a bit more money. And then like, oh, no. Uh, and then yeah, that's it lah. Mm. <laughs> yeah. So, sometimes it's a it's an image thing, right? The parents yeah. don't want the kids to work True. a certain yes. job. It just looks off to them. But then money is money, what? Right? Yeah. And uh, you learn to be you learn to appreciate money correct, because right, you right. Uh, earn it yourself. When you look at your grease cover hands, it's like, wow, I earn <laughs> all this effort. money. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> or you face. So you recommend doing side gigs, part-time jobs? Mm, definitely. Yeah. Um, 100%. Well, maybe not only part-time jobs. Uh, maybe and your mama. Full-time. selling, you know, all your old mm. um, valuable things that you may not mm. be using it again. Mm. And yeah, yeah, yeah. Pretty love, pretty love. Yeah, 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 yeah. pretty love. Yeah. Like baby items. Nice. Yeah. Very condo. <laughs> right? Moment right there. Yeah. So, so many thrift concepts. <laughs> yes, right now, yes. Right? Mm, that maybe will help a, a, a bit, yeah. True, 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 true. How to save money for emergency fund wants and needs when I'm spending 60% of my income already on car and home loan? Um, okay, savings can start as little as possible mm. um, until it becomes a habit. Mm. Yeah, we, we yeah. actually talk just about it, about it. right? Yeah, so when it becomes a habit, I mean, maybe it depends on the... In the on the current financial situation for every people, yeah. maybe they can start as small as like maybe thirty dollars. Like why not, mm-hmm. right? Every month until maybe they feel comfortable to increase, increase, and then um, from there they might want to buy insurance and maybe mm. investments, Correct. right? Yeah. True. Hmm. I would from, like, yeah. Okay. Please. Uh, I'd like to add on that um, because the question is: sixty percent of their income goes to loan, right? Mm. Um, that sounds. Like a typical Bruneian? <laughs> <laughs> Most. Realistic. It sounds realistic. It's realistic, very realistic, right? actually. Um, which is also the capacity that most banks, you know, would limit you. If you go over 60, you, can, you cannot, lah, unless you, you know, go to your husband and then, you know, take a loan for me, stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Um, that's why the financial planning guideline, right? So it's just a guideline, not 100% thingy, is when we try to mm-hmm. take a loan, make sure it's... Around thirty-five percent of below. Mm-hmm. It's the idea is just that so that we have more room to be flexible if we want to change our lifestyle. So we're not yeah. like super committed, mm. Mm. Yes. right? Correct. Um, but if I have a client who you know come to me and talk about that, uh, number one, definitely try to review their budgeting expenses. Mm. Right. Try mm. to really sit down and look where does my money really goes. Right. Sometimes they will say. Uh, um, food kale, right? Kale. <laughs> kale. Yeah. Always. Then once you review, maybe it's actually not food. It's maybe always scented candles. Yeah. You know. Maybe it's a secret hobby, right? <laughs> Fiction <laughs> hobby suddenly, right? <laughs> Fiction, <laughs> Fiction <laughs> hobby. Okay. Right? Uh, so that's one thing. It's like, 
trying to look into my expenses and see which area am I willing to sacrifice. Mm. Yes. Right. Be- and then look at the bigger picture. Like if I really yeah. want to right. clear out my debt, if I really want to have another more important financial goals, mm. I should be able to sacrifice some things. Yes. Number two, this actually, um, this is based on true story. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, recently, uh, someone came to me and said, "Mina, I have a lot of loan. What can I do with it?" So she was really stressed. And this is not the typical loan for lifestyle renovation. Uh, something bad happened, and mm. she had to take one, two, three times loans just to take mm. care of it. Okay. Right. So it was a misery lah for mm. her. Um, so what we did was we sat down and tried to review all the different loans that she had, mm. and then we realized that her savings was actually enough to pay out one of her loans. Oh. Right? So after she paid out that one loan, she, uh, after that, she can have extra like 300 cash flow every single month. Mm-hmm. Right? Because uh, that loan is like 300 every single month. Yep. And after a few months after that, we realized that, okay, you start uh, building your saving again and then you can actually use that to pay another loan. Mm. Right? So this mm. kind of stuff okay, you okay. can try to review yep. on your own or you can try to meet professionals. Snowball it. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Nice. Mm-hmm. What can I expect to get from a financial planning consultation? Normally what we do um, during financial planning we will gather all the information of mm. the customers Correct. and um, to get all the their commitments, existing commitments, and also, of course, their source of income, if they have, have any extra, I mean, if they have any side, of, side income. Mm. And then uh, we will gather all those and we will sit down the customer and also to, um, how do you say it, toward, um, towards meeting, uh, we will sit down to, to actually know what are their future goals. Correct. Yeah. yeah. And we want to plan on what their future goals and mm. to to get if they have any retirement needs. I mean, it's good to have a retirement plan, Correct. right? So because um, top SAP not enough. Uh, mm. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. And future goals uh, like SAP. Maybe they want to some some every every clients or every everyone will have a different type of goals. Right. Maybe they want to retire early. Mm. Right, Good. so we will Get see again house. on how we can manage on why they why do they want to retire early, and also maybe on education planning mm. for the kids. Yep. Yeah. So we will have to you know calculate and on mm. how we can we can um, manage mm. their their. Expenses mm. and to, to get, reduce. To get married, right? Yeah, to get married. Yeah. yeah. You, you also find for us. Find a match. Also <laughs> um, <laughs> why, why not? Why not? You, yeah, I'll put your name in the list. <laughs> yeah. Right, also, the new subsidiary um, by the rematches. This is our best financial plan ever. Find it, Jojo. Maybe Jojo. Some, some single people, they might have a de- the desire oh. to travel, mm. right? So, yeah. yeah, on how to Even say. couples. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> After we kids, yeah. you have to spend yeah. <laughs> Even, so um, many. No. Before and after kids, yeah, after exactly. having kids, yeah. Mm. A lot of people come that they want to start a business as well, and they oh, want yeah. to, yeah, yes, yes, yes. They True. need help in figuring out how much it costs to start a business, yes. because most people say, it's like, okay, after I retire, I want to put in one thousand to start a restaurant, and mm-hmm. usually, you know, it's not gonna be feasible. True, mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> because one thing, the cost is there already, and secondly, I don't think they have the energy for it already. Mm. So you have to educate them. It's like, you know you're going to be a kong already. <laughs> <laughs> Do you have the energy to actually run the business by then? Right? So yes. sometimes it's, it's not just financial, right? Sometimes we consult mm-hmm. them on a the personal yes. level. Mm-hmm. But next question. One of my goals is to have my own house. Should I start housing loan as early as possible or wait? Can you give me any financial tips on how to start saving to buy a house? I think the best would be to start as early as possible because if you start as early means your tenure to take out loan is longer so mm. your repayment can be lower. So when your repayment is lower, you don't have to suffer as much for your normal because in the end when you... Suffer. <laughs> it's really suffering because okay. when you buy, take out the house loan it's already take up a huge chunk of your right. salary yes. and then your remaining, you mm. still haven't uh, add in furniture. Mm. Uh, your um, legal fees curtains and your yeah. insurance for the house mm-hmm. is not cheap mm-hmm. right mm-hmm. yes yeah, so if you start late 
that means your repayment for the loan has to be a lot higher because you mm. can because they the bank usually count up to how long you can work till. Yeah. So usually are 50, 55. 55 yeah. mm. And also on the insurance, insurance premium. The, yes, the, the, correct. The, Age you the, the older age, you are, yeah, the, the they will be more expensive. Yes. Yeah. So yeah. if you can start early, it will be better. Yeah. Mm. Mm. Why are you looking at me though? <laughs> no, no, you really have to you, know, some, you look like you have something to say. Hey. Oh, I always look like I have something to say, but nothing. Wrong. <laughs> Yesterday you said something about you know this this uh, like the Red. the previous people they have this kind of thinking to to yeah. buy. Ah, house. oh yeah, yeah. You yeah. Are. Oh, thank you. Ah, you're very good prompter. Oh my god. <laughs> We are no, also we're looking at you. My, my brain is like already oh, <laughs> switched off. Uh, listening to you. Okay, but that's that's a very good point because a lot of people they want to buy a house because mm. um, it's been ingrained by society, right? That you know to be successful you must have a house. Mm. But a lot of the youngsters nowadays they they value mobility. They like to be, move around. Mm. They mm. like to travel the world. Enjoy. Mm like working in a certain places mm. one, two years. Mm -hmm. And buying a house actually locks you within the country for yeah. 20 years, yes. 25 years, right? Yep. Because th that's a long uh, loan duration. Unless you can earn a significant amount in another country mm. to support yeah. that lifestyle while paying off the loan, that one I also want, uh, right? <laughs> <laughs> but long story short, I think we should see if home ownership is really the goal we want or mm. a goal that someone imparted on us. Yeah, yeah. that's where the financial planning comes Correct. Mm. Otherwise, it will be financial planning. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I, I have an add-on question. Would you recommend investing in house in Brunei? Um, Again, that's why it depends on the subjective. financial situation of the... But the I wouldn't, product. to be honest, because... As a homeowner myself, I don't see my house value going up like in other countries. <laughs> so it feels like the property market is not conducive because of a lot of uh, cooling measures. But at least you know you have um, a, a heritage to your, for your yes. kids, right? So yeah, if, that's if you value uh, legacy or having a place of your own, then yes. Mm. But as an asset to sell or rent out for a mm. higher value, yeah. I don't think so. Yeah, mm. I agree, yes. okay. Is land an investment? Hmm? What? Just, mm, land. just land, right? Can. Investment? Yeah, if you have yes. a big plan, you can uh, yes. let me know. I uh, want to... Yeah, because um, now actually yeah, a lot of developer is looking for a land. Correct. Yeah. Mm. So um, it's, it's actually good. So usually, usually how people profit off lands is if it's a good area, mm -hmm. they'll find developers to, to build up housing, right? Mm. Or shop houses. Mm -hmm. And then the landowner will get a portion of it mm. while the developer gets the rest. So that's how they ROI from there. But they will own it permanently, is it? The developer, yes. But the yeah. landowner will Shit. own some of the properties that they build. Uh, so technically, yes. the developer takes the risk by injecting all the capital and workmanship. Mm -hmm. And then the landowner gets a portion of that development. Mm. Mm. That's good. Mm -hmm. So it can be a good investment. I don't see the need to save what I earn. YOLO, am I wrong? Okay. Yes. I like, I like this question. <laughs> YOLO, okay, YOLO. Let's give it to her. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I, I say I like this question because um, I think there's nothing wrong with YOLO. It's mm. just that because as I mentioned just now, I do believe in living in the present, right? I'm not saying don't save, don't do financial planning. I'm just saying... I believe in living in the present because there's no guarantee that tomorrow will come, right? But I would like to um, look at a bigger picture and shift the perspective a bit, right? Yes to YOLO, but I believe that financial planning should not be depriving us and not getting what we want, right? Financial planning should be... Um, fin financial planning should be serving us into getting what we want. Yes. Right? Mm. So if we want YOLO, um, then we can still financial plan, spend, and be less anxious at the end of the day. Right? I, I have an analogy for this. It's like, because I was really <laughs> laughing when I was thinking about this. Trying to get into financial planning is like trying to get into a relationship. Right? <laughs> if yeah. our mindset is this relationship is going to limit me, right? Oh, 
you know, uh, if I get into a relationship, uh, it's going to take away my freedom, it's going to take away my time, stuff like that. Then I don't, I'm going to be single. Lah, right? But mm-hmm. if I shift that perspective into this relationship is going to give me, you know, support, companionship, yeah. uh, yes. more connection with the family, yes. then um, I'll be looking forward to this, to this mm. relationship. Right? So it's the same thing with financial planning. If we think of it as something depriving us, right, mm. then we're not going to go through uh, financial planning. But Correct. try to shift that a bit. Um, financial planning should be serving us. Right. So if you want YOLO, do more financial planning, then you can be more YOLO. Hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I think you can YOLO in a controlled manner. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You, yeah. Yeah. Because if you splurge, right, you burn up. But if you have mm. cash set aside for splurging, then you have a controlled mm-hmm. YOLO set aside. Yeah. And I so set aside a YOLO fund. <laughs> yeah, 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 I, I yeah. like that. I like right? YOLO yeah. fund. Yes. Because I get, I get my customer's clientele to set aside 10%. Of their income as a fun fund, mm-hmm. so that is guilt free spending that they can yolo. It's, it can be called a yolo fund actually. Nice, mm-hmm. nice. Yeah. I like that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I was also thinking you could okay. Uh, if people really come to me, what I think I would do is I would give them a reverse you know uno. Reverse right? uno. <laughs> you activate reverse my chat uno, card, yeah. right? Am because they ask right? Am I wrong? Do you think you're wrong? <laughs> because at the end of the day, when they yolo and they don't do financial planning, at the end of the month, confirm they feel a bit anxious. Mm. Right. 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 It's really, they really mm. think about yep. it. So do financial planning, then you can YOLO carefree. Mm. <laughs> True. So then yeah. I'm an advocate for YOLO, YOLO and, right? And expert in relationships. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> I've learned over the years to just say, okay, you do what you want. Mm. Mm-hmm. When you mm-hmm. crash and uh, hurt yourself, you can come back for your medicine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. For me, my belief is, I think it's a lot to do with their money psychology. Right, because a lot of people, much like we're here, we talk about money, which is super nice. Mm. Tapi uh, in real life, we don't really talk about money as much. Mm. But right. um, so everyone has different money money philosophy mm. because of the way they were brought in. So yeah. for example, I know this one guy, he keeps on spending, uh, and spend, 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 and at one point he realized I have no idea what I'm spending. It's just like I'm just spending, mm. and it was right. actually because. From early childhood, um, her his mom passed away, mm. right? So um. she got, he got like insurance money, and then his dad mm. passed away, right? Another. So wow. the only way he was trying to mitigate that pain was I'll buy something, and then mm. oh, I feel happy about Retail it. Retail therapy, mm. yeah. And then it's mm-hmm. like a habit of at least like twenty years. So it's so mm. hard to, like, how can Break. I not spend anymore? Right? It's a habit already. Mm. But at least the first step was, you know, being conscious lah, and then try right. really try to learn to uncondition mm. themselves so they can rewrite their uh, mental psychology, yeah. money psychology. Yeah. yeah. To add on to that, actually, it's really to down to the upbringing, right? Mm. So yes. kids really, uh, as parents, kids really observe you and they'll pick up the good and the bad regardless yes. you want yeah. it or not. <laughs> <laughs> so... Yeah. Uh, the same thing with uh, financial matters. If they watch their parents just splurge on whatever and not mm-hmm. having savings, they will either follow or go against it. Yeah. And the good thing is I've seen a lot of them going against it. Yep. Mm-hmm. So they want to change that so-called cycle. Yes. Yeah, yeah. yes, yes. So that's a very good yeah, uh, shift in the yeah. paradigm. Mm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, I also realized there's sometimes uh, two different extremes, right? In mm. terms of clients. Uh, there's someone who would have amazing savings, right? Amazing, lots of savings, but they would still feel anxious every single day. Like, they don't feel like their emergency fund is enough. Mm. Right? So they hoard money. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, like another extreme is like, so many debt, uh, so many commitment, mm-hmm. but, and they would still gamble on their money. Not literally gamble, but yeah. yeah. Hmm. Speaking of like children, is there any way for you to like, sort of teach them from an early age how to, you know, see the value of money and maybe, like, impart to them this financial literacy wisdom. Like, maybe I will direct this to Rina and uh, Gabby. La. Maybe start with Gabby. Um, okay, maybe for me, how I control my kids with spending is that I limit what they can buy. So I said, uh, so, because he's primary one, so he can go to the canteen and buy some stuff. So everything is... Um, value there is one dollar so i give i will give him one dollar i said here's one dollar you can buy anything you want um 
but that's it. So he will be conditioned to only spend that $1 mm. and will not mm. ask for more. And then I say, unless you try to do some chores, then you earn more, then you can get mm. to spend more. So nice. th that's one of the ways. Yeah. Do they bring food as well to school? Or? Uh, yes, yes, yes. Uh, uh, so he they, he can he they, they can have a choice. Uh, it's just that I've been very busy. <laughs> so I prefer <laughs> to just give $1. Okay. <laughs> it's like much easier for me. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Working moms. Yeah. Yeah. Working mom. um, well, for me, I'm, my eldest is four years old. So um, it's quite hard hard to get them to actually understand on how to save yet but mm. what we normally do is like because like a four-year-old they are they love to buy toys right yeah. but we normally limit them so like, yeah. um, like once a month mm. like so you will only get toys you only get to buy toys once a month mm. and then if you want to get again we'll get another month yeah yeah Oh, uh, to add to that, so sometimes I will tell my son, okay, you can buy anything below 50. <laughs> so he will look, so he knows the value of that okay. item. Mm -hmm. So what is like 20, 30 is all below 50. Mm. I'll so try that with my nieces. Nieces, <laughs> your exp social experiment for the day. <laughs> <laughs> okay, you have to post that. <laughs> yeah, that would be very interesting. Yeah, update everyone. Yeah. <laughs> for my son, I actually try to ingrain him to think for himself. Like, mm. what's the value of money? Because it's very sub subjective, right? Same, four years old, mm. coming to four. Mm. So, what happens was, sometimes we will drive and pass by Toys R Us or something like that. Mm. And he'll be like, I want to go there and buy some toys. Mm. Oh. Then I'll ask him, you have money? He's like, think a bit. <laughs> Daddy, you have money? I was like, no, I don't have already. <laughs> then you think, yeah. oh, I have angpa money. I was like, but you spend it all. Then you just sit there. <laughs> you, can, you, can, you can tell he's thinking, you know. He's like, think, 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 think. Then, okay, the, 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 the topic is over for that time. So next time, next time we keep on cultivating that. Like, yeah. I want to have this... Money awareness. Money awareness plus yeah. conversation. Because yeah, yes. a lot of families, they treat money as a taboo sub subject. Yes. And it's like, oh, I don't... I don't uh, no, I don't talk about money, la, you know. We have enough. Something like that, right? Mm. But I want it to be an open conversation that yes. slowly he will get to appreciate mm. that once he learn numbers, oh, I, well, I cannot already. <laughs> once he know numbers, right? then, like, hey, daddy actually have ten. <laughs> but red, that one color, then, like, doesn't matter. Red to color him. is ten, daddy. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I want the purple one. <laughs> In case. <laughs> or they know, just use cut. Oh, oh yeah. really? Money can use cut. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> I have I have some clients that the kids will tell them. They just use cards. Yeah. <laughs> like, so they don't understand that the card also has limits. Yeah. 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 Right. I'm taking notes <laughs> for my kids later. Yeah. For my kids yeah. in the future. Yeah. The magic plastic. I think plastic. the important part is to have conversations but age-appropriate yes. conversations. Yes. Yeah. Okay, okay. There should be games created for Oh, this there is thing. like a Monopoly for kids, which I did buy. Mm -hmm. oh. uh, so it's like a Monopoly for... I think it's like six years old and mm -hmm. below. Mm -hmm. So okay. they just roll the dice. So it teach them numbers. When you mm -hmm. roll the dice, how yeah. many you move and then how much cash you take uh -huh. if you buy the property. So mm -hmm. okay. yes, I did buy that to play mm -hmm. with my kids. Huh? We'll try mm -hmm. that. We'll Okay, so guys, next is the rapid fire section, budgeting. Do you have those physical jars or boxes for budgeting? Do you keep your receipts of all the spendings you did? What did I do? <laughs> <laughs> guys, it should be this. <laughs> do you have an Excel sheet of income and expenditures? Do you watch or listen to other financial type of content? Do you get excited over cheaper alternative brands for groceries? I'm Asian uncle, but not that uncle. Do you reduce the number of subscriptions and memberships if you can? Have you picked up a hobby like coffee or jogging just to DIY it and save money? Okay. Rapid fire segment. Questions will be thrown at you now. Okay. Literally. 
First questions, are you guys ready? Ready! Yes. <laughs> what is financial independence and how do you be it? So, financial independence is a financial state that we achieve down the line if you make the right choices. So, during this financial independence state, I believe uh, anything you spend won't feel stressful. So, you go for groceries, top up your car, or even have uh, your car breakdown, you replace parts. It, won't, it shouldn't be stressful. And that is the financial independence state where you don't have to worry, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So, how to be it <laughs> is uh, to be consistent with our money and uh, invest, save in the proper channels, you know, don't mm -hmm. get scammed. And sooner or, late, sooner or later, uh, we should be able to achieve it. Lah, as long as the choices are more cons or are consistent. Yeah, it's more to sometimes the people, the person itself on mm -hmm. how to manage themselves. Yeah, themselves. Correct, yeah. Financial independence, any much I'm rich, ka, like man, millionaire? No, no it doesn't have to be. Yeah, it doesn't have to. It can just be as long as you have roof on top of your head, you have food on your table. Mm -hmm. Yes, mm. Mm. and you don't have to like, oh, I have to worry about next day, do I have enough to buy my lunch? Mm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, I guess it's more like yes. a state of feeling independence, of having freedom, having yeah. options, mm. like yes. no worries, no concern. Hakuna mm. Matata. Mm. Yes. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> he, he, he wrote a lot on running, but I've never read him. Huh? Correct, right? No, ka? Oh, maybe Pumba? <laughs> Never buy Simba. A lot about running. Are you running a lot about the hyenas? Are you guys financially independent yourself? Yes, in my dreams. Directing to that. Getting there. Getting there. Yeah. Yeah. Can I can I answer that? I would honestly say no because let's say if anything happened to me today, I still have you know a couple of. One loan lah, one loan to take care of. Right, if anything happened to me, someone else might need to pay for my loan and stuff like that. But mm -hmm. I always believe uh, in trying to live in the present, right? So you know, I might try to get independence as much as I want today, but there's no guarantee that tomorrow will come, right? Mm -hmm. So I will still yeah. try to much um have a more relaxed mind today rather than struggle just to get this financial independence in the future. Yeah, so it's like mm, a true bit balance, yeah. right? True, true, true. Yeah, yeah. It's, th it's something that uh, this FIRE movement is going into, right? Yeah. Mm. So What's a FIRE movement? So FIRE stands for Financial Independence, Retire, retire early. early. So a lot of people want to retire before 50, yes. and stuff like that. Mm. But usually I will advise people that, hey, if you want to take your time and have a more relaxed way of achieving mm. it, it's no worries because um, it's better to retire at 55 uh, in the in the normal method, yep. then retire forty five, and then because of the stress, you go tit, 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 <laughs> and then for the for the yeah. six, you're out of the picture already, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah that's correct. That is, yeah, very yeah. true. Mm -hmm. And mm. I can honestly relate so much to that because at one point I was like, yeah, I I felt like I wanted to struggle so much just to get this, you know, a number of money so I can mm. be be this financial independence. Yeah. But again, what I mentioned just now, there's no guarantee tomorrow will come. I'll enjoy today, man. YOLO. <laughs> YOLO. <laughs> Mm. But okay. still safe. Yes. Oh, <laughs> but safe and invest. If you have been investing for a while, how does one diversify their portfolio? Okay, I'll take that. So if let's Talk say you. you've been investing for a while, um, mm. it depends on what sector you have been investing. If you're investing mostly into a mixture of bonds and um, equities, then maybe you can start looking into country, like different countries or mm. properties. Mm. Yeah. Um, or um, sector like healthcare or ESG. So ESG stands for environmental sustainability, sustainability growth. 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 Yeah. Okay. I mean, there's there's such a thing as uh, over diversifying, right? Because if you over diversify, mm -hmm. you cannot focus in areas that you want to grow. Mm -hmm. Yes. So you need to find a sweet spot to uh, like a balance. Yeah. And usually, you can follow <coughs> top investors. Like Warren Buffett and all that, they invest in things they like. Mm. So he likes Coke, so he invests yes, in he Coke. In stuff like that. Yeah, so mm. that's why I advise people as well. If you, mm. you can find things you like. So if you like Garmin or Apple Watches, you can uh, invest into those companies because yes. you believe in them. Yeah. 
Mm. Yeah, it's just like uh, so investing is not just pure investing into like uh, those banking products. You can look into like assets, like let's say some people like watches, or people buy into mm. Rolex, mm. or. Some people buy into designer bags and things like that. Mm. Yeah. 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 What's a popular thing. thing to invest in right now? Like everybody's <laughs> investing into it. UTs. <laughs> What's that? UTs on the yeah. Yeah. Trust. Yeah. 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 Trust was one gold is coming up as well. Yeah, I feel like gold is... Like the healthcare? physical gold? Yeah. Healthcare is also yeah, yeah, you know, because of this. Previously, um, what we have, the situation, health situation, like... Yeah. The COVID nineteen, so the healthcare at healthcare is also rising, right? Yes, mm. correct. Correct, correct. Mm. What are the budgeting basics we all can start doing today? I think it doesn't have to be complicated, right? Mm-hmm. Budgeting is all about planning what I want to spend on, and what I want to save on, and what I do personally, I would just sit down and I would try to list down what I want, right? My financial mm. goals, mm. right? How much I want to save, what do I want, how much do I want to travel every single year, stuff like that. Mm. And I was also looking to my current situation right now, mm. which is right now, where does my money come from mm. and where does my money go, right? Yep. And from there, I know what I want, I know where I am right now. The next thing is just planning from how do I get from A to B. That's it. When mm. is the best time to start budgeting? Yesterday. Yesterday. Hey. <laughs> Uh, yes. Sorry. Oh yeah, hello. <laughs> <laughs> Do it to myself then. No need to cut that one. That one's good. <laughs> need the hello gap. Anyway, so rolling back to the budgeting thing, I think one of the best ways to get started is now we are all connected to the internet, right? You can just mm-hmm. Google a budgeting template mm-hmm. and just try it out yourself. Mm-hmm. Allocate your income expenses and then see at the end of the month by right you should have how much. If it's negative, then okay lah, you're in trouble lah. You can talk to one of us. <laughs> <laughs> Even the social, um, I mean, uh, the social media platform like Instagram, they also have, they also like have this some sort of um, budgeting tips on that. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, yeah there's a the lot list. on mm. IG. Yeah, yeah. yeah, there's a lot of content but creators it, online. Mm, and everything. But I have to be careful lah, because some content creators give dubious advice also. <laughs> if a person say that um, they are offering you this course to how to increase your money mm. and then they like to show their physical mm. cash, how much they oh, withdraw. Yeah. Those are something to look at. <laughs> yeah. And then you have to ask them, are they licensed with our regulator? Mm. Mm. Yep. Yes. So th- that's something that I've seen a lot. That What they like to do is like to show, look at me, I'm withdrawing like 10,000s mm. and, like, mm. and what I buy, like mm. good furniture, good cars, but... You are charging people XX amount for this cost. Mm. Where do you think those things are coming from? It's coming from people. Yeah. Right. Yes. Yeah. There's also a lot of uh, social media profiles cropping up that's uh, trying to get people to invest. Yes. Mm-hmm. Then they say, oh, in one month, you can get 10% back. You know, that kind of thing. Yeah. Yep. 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 Yes. Yes. That's, mm. if, if it seems too good to be true, then you usually. Yeah. 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 And, and unfortunately, people really cannot this stuff. Mm. Uh, yes. Recently, I saw an ad that says oh there's a job and then you get commission based and mm. then you can expect about 200 commission per day wow and then you wow. can just work like two hours every single day oh where do i sign up right <laughs> so <laughs> i actually <laughs> oh, do what is this like let me contact them right so i contacted okay. them and then uh it was funny because it was first day of raya okay and then the one that i contacted was malaysian okay i don't know if it's true or not right mm-hmm. um her name was Essay. <laughs> okay, anyway. Yeah. Other so, red flags? Outing, outing. Definitely red flags, right, from the beginning. And then I was so curious, how does that work? And then they told me, um, basically, you know how... So it's some sort of marketing agency. Okay. And then mm-hmm. what you need to do is you need to... Um, apa namanya, to give it back ara Dorothea client punya Airbnb. So it's like you need to give good okay. feedback, oh, stuff like that. Fake reviews. Yes, Fake reviews yes. lah. Yes. And then I was like, oh, okay. Interesting. So nice are this red flag, Yoko. So I actually emailed. So if you know, if you really encounter this, what you can do is you can, uh, you know, screenshot all the stuff and you can email to BDCB and mm. Bruce. Yep. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I did. Mm-hmm. I did. Mm-hmm. Correct, correct. Yes, yes. Just to make people aware of it. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. True. Oh, yes. Another thing was, uh, I also tried to Google can this website that they gave, and then it turns out that website was only like seven days years old. Oh. Mm. That was like, okay, major red flag. <laughs> <laughs> How do I stop living paycheck to paycheck? 
Number one is to start looking at what your money is spending on. So if you're spending a lot on like unnecessary stuff, like what? To, like <laughs> bags, shoes. Um, I need bag too. <laughs> oh, you said bag was an investment. Okay. Designer <laughs> bags, certain certain designer <laughs> bags. Okay. Uh, the one that will go in value year Brand by loyalty. year. Okay. okay. So um, if you already have a bag, then you don't need another or a co- another cosmetic and things like that. So stop splurging Maybe. and <laughs> and if you cannot stop splurging, then another thing is we'll have more side hustle. Increase mm. your side income, mm. then um, it's much easier to budget. In that. addition to that, maybe uh, we're look we can look at like to take care of the important ones first, mm. like our foods, like food shelters, mm. utilities, yeah. transportation. Right. That's what it's that is our our daily daily thing. Yeah. Mm. yeah. Um, like also maybe start an emergency fund. Start mm. slow. Yeah. Start little. Yeah. Yep. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm. yeah. I exactly. think the first thing that every, anyone should start off with emergency fund. Yes. Mm. And then second. Yes. On your insurance. Mm, After right. that, then whatever left over, then you can consider investment. Yes. Mm-hmm. Always. Right. Yeah. Mm. How, we agree. How much do you think people should have as an emergency fund? I think Deep. for myself, I would think at least six months of yeah. Three to six months of your yeah. salary. Salary. Yeah. salary yeah. Mm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I would say sometimes people ask me can mm. why three to six months? Mm. And should I go for three? Should I go for six? six. Mm. Right? Uh, for me, it highly depends on how you feel about your own security. Mm. Right? So, for example, if you're in, let's say, a government job and there's pretty minimal chance that you'll get, you know, fired, stuff mm. like that. So, three is enough, mm. right? Yeah. But if yeah. you're yeah. In, more entrepreneurial, you have a business, yeah. some, some business owners would save up to one year mm. because yes. that's just how risky their income is. Mm. Mm. So, yeah. 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 But um, I think the question here is more like you're already living paycheck, paycheck to paycheck, paycheck. but mm. then you're asking me to save more from this paycheck to paycheck lifestyle I already have. Mm. So, how do you suggest these people start? Mm. What happens is, I think, uh, people living paycheck to paycheck is because they spend everything they have and then try to save whatever is left, Mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And uh, one of the tips that I usually give to people is uh, you can save first. It doesn't really matter how much. It can be 10% of income, it can be 50 bucks, it can be 5 bucks. But you want to build that habit that you take the top of your salary and put it aside first and then spend the rest. Mm. Because once you spend everything, there's nothing to save already anyway, right? So it's better to have the habit of saving first. Yep. Mm. Yes. Very true. For me, uh, I, I definitely agree. Um, for me, there's two main ways, right? Uh, number one is we can look into at the expenses bit, right? Okay, I really look down into uh, where does my money really goes and which area can I cut, can I sacrifice, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, but there's a cons to this because uh, if I try to focus much on my expenses, not saying it's wrong, it's the right thing to do, um, but there's a limitation, uh, l- there's a limitation on how much I can save out of it. So, for example, if my salary is 1K, the most I can save is probably like 800, 900. That's like amazing already. Like you're a saint, <laughs> right? But if I try to shift, okay, yes, I spend less, try to spend less, try to look into which area I can spend less on. Uh, why not I try to look into how can I earn more income? Because when it comes to income, there's the, the sky is the limit, right? Mm-hmm. There's no ceiling to income. Yeah. So instead of focusing on something that is limited, so try to focus more on something more mm. abundant. More side income, yes. Yes. basically. Where can I find this limitless income? <laughs> 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 what are the different kinds of investments? Uh, okay, I'll take that. So currently, we have like the most common one, unit trust. In, mm, available yeah. in the Brunei market. You, we also have... Um, Securities trading, so securities trading is basically stocks trading, mm-hmm. okay? So, stocks trading also include ETF, so commonly known as exchange-traded funds, that's mm-hmm. available as well. Mm-hmm. And then we also mm-hmm. have fixed income slash bonds. Mm-hmm. Yes, so all these are available in so the market. So, Gabby, um, normally the people, the clients who came to you, do they actually have the, the knowledge about, you know, this, all the securities trading, bonds, you know? Actually, uh, for Brunei, not many know what are these security trading or bonds. Mm. But actually, we 
we start to see more youngsters actually being aware of these products. Mm. Uh, but mm. what they do is they, they, they learn it from the mm-hmm. IG. Mm-hmm. Yes. Mm-hmm. Correct. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Nice. yeah. On top of that, they, like you said earlier, you, uh, different kinds of investment could be physical products like uh, watches. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah it's not just just bank products. You, mm. you, when you talk about investment, also include things like collectibles, like yeah. you know your your yes. your Gundam yeah. figurines. Wow, you know what's Gundam? <laughs> not <Duh>. bad. <laughs> <laughs> and then yeah, yeah, and then art, and also. Mm. Gold, physical Precious gold. Metal. So recently, I've seen a lot of like Brunei is buying this uh, physical gold, which is like a small square yeah, piece. Yeah. So yeah, yeah that's like an investment the, itself. Yeah. yeah, they start to start. Small. Is that real gold actually? Huh? Is that real gold? Yes, yes, inside? yes. How yes, do you know? It's basic. It's basic. I think it comes with a certif- certificate yeah. to say it's a real gold. And oh. yeah. Mm. Mm. yeah, you see my teeth over here. <laughs> oh wow. <laughs> <laughs> uh, practical investment I can use. Ah. Speaking of like collectibles, like art and stuff, why do billionaires collect art you feel? For the flex. Yes. <laughs> I'm not That's, yeah. Yeah, yeah, to say that the they can afford this and they have this at their home. And, yeah. and if they have their guests, you say, do you know, this yeah. art is like, well, it's the same the, reason the, the, why the they buy. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> Pisaco. Yeah. <laughs> Some have, have a lot of <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> so the thing is, for those rich guys, right? Uh, if they buy a car, it will diminish in depreciate in value. Mm. But for arts, especially from those diseased artists, diseased, <laughs> as in like oh, dead already. Oh, oh, yeah. oh, okay. <laughs> dead already. <laughs> their, their art is basically like you know very valuable because yeah, 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 yeah. you will never get it again. Because you know. True. Right. True, true, true. Mm. So now we isn't that the correct word? Disease artist. <laughs> now we try to look at which artist is <laughs> going to Mati. <laughs> Do you recommend buying art? Um, depends on the person. If you are really into arts, and also mm. plus, uh, yes, you can keep it as um asset, but does not mean it's easy to sell because you need to right. find someone that appreciates it, yes. uh, that yeah. is willing to pay the price for that. Yes. Yeah. yeah. And that's, uh, I just would like to comment on that. And that's the reason why, uh, you know, pe- more people are going into stock market because it's just so easy compared to <laughs> asset that is like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm, are collectibles, yeah, if you want to sell it, if sell, you want to yeah, sell it sell again, it. it's like, oh, who want to buy? Please but buy. But that's what we call diverse, diversifying, diversifying, right? Yeah. 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 I, I wouldn't go into art. Because I will confirm gonna scam one. <laughs> I have no idea. Yeah, I cannot appreciate it. It's like, oh, this is banana on the wall is an art. Like, oh, is it? <laughs> it's a just dot, banana to me. A dot, a dot is an art. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. amazing. <laughs> what is financial planning? Okay, let me answer that. Mm, a financial planning is like um, taking a pr- um, a process of taking care of your financial situation Mm. and building a specific plan to reach your goals. Mm. It's like also um, a a practice to putting um, together for your future, Mm -hmm. specifically um, on how to manage the the future on the potential costs and issues that may arise that we may not, we are may unable to predict. Mm. Yeah. Mm. When should you start financial planning? Yesterday. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> 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 yeah. So, so what are the steps you will take yeah. to plan someone's finances? Uh, well, when someone, some clients come to us, then we will have to, what we normally do is, uh, we will take a complete picture on how uh, to take, to complete picture on their assets, liabilities, mm. and then their income and also expenses. And then from there, we will be able to see on um, to on how can we reach their goals and to see on to, towards meeting their needs. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they normally will ask like, um, but honestly, um, what we have, I mean, what we always have, um, most of our clients, they they will say like, um, hey, I have I have a lot of this commitment, so how. Is there any way that I can mm. reduce this commitment so that I can save more? Mm. So that is where we 
we take all their their commitments yeah. and then well it won't be a day to do to do all yeah. that so we will have to sit down with them and then we'll have to write down all their incomes I mean, it's, it's like right. a, a gap analysis on mm-hmm. to us and then we will ask them like do you have any project retirement needs and yep. then also um, any long term financial obligations mm-hmm. to 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 see yep. yeah Is yeah it depends on the customer because every customer they will have a different type of goal different goals correct mm. is it like a one time sitting or do you go through it again and again depends on the customer i mean if the customer is at home Yeah, it it is also in the help. Yeah, depend depending on the customer on their mm. current financial situation. Correct. Yeah. For me, yes. I like people who uh, new young adults mm-hmm. who join the workforce. Those people mm-hmm. who yes. approach me, I am very happy for them because they get started on the right way. They don't build yeah. bad financial habits, mm-hmm. and uh, I am very jealous of them because I didn't have this awareness. <laughs> True. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, right. Age. <laughs> true, true. I was like, damn. Yeah. This guy is gonna be richer than me in ten years than I was in twenty years. <laughs> I mean, I had I had students coming to me and oh, yeah. say, eh, um, yeah, I just got my allowance, but can I start investing? Can yeah, I start yeah. saving for long term? Exactly. Just like, mm-hmm. It's crazy. Like I've never had this kind of exposure before. Mm. It's like yeah, I'm true, impressed. Right? Yeah. What are some of the baby steps I can take into investing? You yeah. can do your homework first. That's the first thing to. Get into it is to know what you're trying to invest into and why. Mm. That's very very true. Cause um, we have a lot of clients that come in and say, "Oh, I don't know what I'm going to." Just can you recommend which is yes. good for me? Yeah. And then they just invest without knowing the what purpose. they're yeah mm-hmm. they're investing yeah. in. So, I, um, actually, it's really good for clients to read out what they want to buy in instead mm. of just buying it blindly or because the friend said this is good. Yeah, true, exactly. True. Yep. Yeah. yeah, because there's a there's a type of investment for a certain goal. You see, mm. for someone who is nearing retirement, you don't go into high risk. Yes, because yes. you cannot. Yeah, yeah you cannot yeah. face right. like the market yeah. conditions like now, yeah. right? Yes. Mm. But for people who are younger, they can go the up and round roller coaster yeah. for yeah. much longer. Yes. So mm-hmm. they can go for more high risk yeah. investments. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Yes. Yeah, and I would say also on a little bit of perspective. Shift as well. So, for example, uh, people always come to me and say, "Oh, Mina, investing malase because mm-hmm. it's so it sounds so complicated. It's so mm. hard. Much um whatever lah investing." But mm. I definitely agree. If we just shift a little bit, investing actually don't have to be that hard. Yeah. It can yeah. be super yes. easy. You Correct. just have to slowly learn bits by bits, mm-hmm. yep. and then start small, really. Correct. Yeah, like small and you small. can yeah. autopilot it sooner or later. Yeah. Mm. It's like saving, right? That's why you yes. when you build a savings habit, it translates into an investing habit. Mm. Yes. Because at the end of the day, you're transferring that cash into an investment that will grow more. Do you guys know we actually have? Um, I, I mean, we, our friends are looking at um, doing this new website. What's your friends? I think it's called Bydre Learn. Yeah. So that's where you yeah, yeah, get yeah. all the financial tips. Uh, mm. Not just financial tips. You also have like um, how to plan your. Next birthday, uh, next kid birthday, dating tips, uh, holiday tips, holiday wow. tips. Wow. So it's it's not just product product. Yeah, have a oh, look at it. Amazing. So Hi, my name is Gabby. Thank you for tuning in. And I'm Rina. I hope you enjoy. And I'm Samina Mina. Thank you so much for tuning in. I'm Ge. Like, subscribe, and share with all your friends. Bye. Bye. Bye.